Crouch, bind, set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Payne. It is a pleasure to be back with our third House of Rugby Best Of episode together with our friends at Guinness. We're going to look back at some of the more enjoyable stories that we've had across the course of a fairly turbulent first series. I'm sure you'll agree. This week, we're going to be bringing you recollections on the birth of Bucko, the rope. You're going to be asked to board the Haskell train and you will meet Mike Tyndall's nemesis once again, someone who really wouldn't go quietly into the night. But first of all, we had a mid-season confession from James about some of the tales that he'd been bringing us across the course of the series. You know, you know what's interesting? When I listen to these back, you know, there's a lot of times where I, like, um, sometimes trip over my words, yeah. and sometimes you do it. Do you know what it is? It's because we're never telling the absolute truth. Never. We can never say the truth. That's what I find the most painful. It's because <laughs> the whole time we do the show, more, I'm never more. quite <laughs> telling the truth. Do you In mean, what way? Well, because you can never tell... I can't tell you the, uh, all the truth. When you... Re- the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. No. When you retire, will you tell the whole truth? No, because you just can't. It, it, it's like, if you actually said no what some of these but things are... But then also, some of the truth isn't quite as funny as what we'll probably tell you as well. <laughs> yeah. so, but it's it's very very that true. way. The number of dinners I've done where I've heard various people tell the same story yeah. that they were there yeah. is just yeah. ridiculous. A lot of them are like people you know just were never there. Yeah. Recycled stories. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but my thing is, honestly, I listen to it back and you hear me... When you're speaking and you're thinking about what you're saying, it's it's difficult, and I, and I get frustrated because I listen to it back and I can hear you stopping yourself do it, and I hear myself do it, and I start one sentence, go down an alley, go shit, can't say that, abort, back abort, out abort, of that abort, one, abort. reverse. I'm not like Austin Powers stuck in a corridor. <laughs> you just go, tell them what I'm going to say. Why is this car so bad? It will not make this turn. <laughs> So with that in mind, take everything that you're about to hear with a big pinch of salt. Although up next is the question on everyone's lips come Christmas time. Surely you wouldn't lie about something quite so serious. Is it good at the castle? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's is really it? good. Like, that's yeah. what I wanted to know. Is it like so, <coughs> different level? Uh, so Christmas Day is a little bit more quiet because it's actually a cold buffet because they give everyone the day off. So yeah. uh, they have their big, their big days, Christmas Eve. Right, OK. So everyone gets shindig okay. in the evening. Shindig. Black tie yeah. shindig, yeah. Yeah. Would um, you be wearing something similar here? Would you uh, like this, to push the boundaries? The, I, 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 this year, I have a couple of these. I've ordered a few. <laughs> have you? So, yeah. Uh, so, we open presents Christmas Eve, so I wore one of these to open. Because these are oppo Christmas suits, Christmas. aren't they? Just to give and, them a little... And then just to something. give a little punch at breakfast, I'll come down, I came down in a, a different little setup. And it's well received? It's Yeah. Yeah. Queen gives, loves gives bright colours. That's why she wears all those amazing colours that she does wear because she thinks dark colours are, are for sad times. Whereas, so Christmas, I two years ago, uh, she wasn't feeling very well, and so she didn't go to church. Yeah, and we'd obviously been through what we'd been through uh, with our pregnancy that we we lost. So we did our own little private just as a three. Did you? And I had a suit on like this. I was like, mm, maybe I should be wearing something a little bit different today, but. He's trying to raise the mood. Wow. <laughs> and did you raise the mood? It did. Well, that's yeah, all you can ask yeah. for, then. That's all you need. Well, well done, you. Yeah. Um, and uh, we obviously all eat a lot of turkey. I don't know about you. I then well, We kick back on the sofa and watch the Queen's speech. Do you s- kick back on the sofa and watch the Queen's speech with the Queen? Do you really? <laughs> does she self-critique? I mean, <laughs> does she really? Do you have yeah. to nod along? Go, yes, yeah. well done. That I actually Lovely point that. you've just made. There, yeah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I couldn't have said it better myself. Couldn't have said it better myself. Standing ovation. Amazing. So you watch yeah. the Queen's speech with the Queen, with a little yeah. glass of something, and yeah. that is incredible. That is amazing. And is then you flick amazing. on to Die Hard, Home Alone 2, Downton Abbey Christmas Special. Downton Abbey Christmas Special. I, d- I don't watch it, but there's a lot of people who do. Wow, well, you what, do what as you're told, really, it? don't you, let's be honest. <laughs> no, I, I can't. Who's got, down, who's down got the remote? I've never I've got, got into it. We're watching Downton Abbey. <laughs> uh, we don't want to watch that. Will you? Right. Just like that. Someone yeah. just comes in and just takes you off. <laughs> yeah. so, no. so shoot that man. No, it's it's quite, quite a strange day because if you're from up north, normally I spend my whole day either in my box shorts or my, <laughs> or my tracky beans. There is nothing more northern <laughs> than comparing you and your bockies. Yeah. So, so whereas by, by the time I've normally got up, I've been to church twice, which is quite strange for me, for, from not really a massive church-going background. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's completely different. I've never had to take as many outfits anywhere 
Really? really yeah. yeah. Do, do they get sent ahead in a sort of caravan sort of yeah. thing? That they get well, is that you bringing it down to my level that goes in a caravan? Well, yeah. you know what? Well, that's can, basically can, where can, I sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've just got this little place yeah, the down the corner. The back. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's basically where I, I get put up with everyone else's clothes, yeah. Yeah. Bit of a sing song? Did everyone gather around the piano? Oh, chuck a log on the phone, off you go. Uh, Rude. No. Bring out the sing song yeah. thing again. King Kong. Yeah. 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 Kong. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no, not, no, we haven't heard a sing song as yet. No. What, um, is it sort of like per church service? Do you know how awkward you get it makes more... me feel that you keep answering these questions just to see someone might be watching that I shouldn't say anything about. I, I hope I they think are. You've, you've answered Honestly, perfectly. Honestly, if they actually are, someone is that shouldn't be watching this, I'm like, this will be amazing. That time she told me this story about Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> Viewing figures. Um, so, do, yeah, but just one thing about it. So, you go to church twice. Yeah. Obviously, you offset, with like, offset that by how many meals, you know, decent <laughs> yeah, there's meals. There's a lot of meals. A lot of grazing and wine. So, you're like, oh, they're like, you're like, oh, don't really want to so, go. I want some more food. They're like, can't have any food. Go to church. You go to church. You're like, more food? Another mm -hmm. church service. It's like when you go to a religious Perfect, group at school, you come in and go, oh, Oh, you know, I love God. They go, oh, great. Here's a can of Coke. You're like, brilliant. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, oh, read a prayer. And they go, oh, cookie. You're like, yeah, thanks. How much do you love God? Lots. That's like, that's what we used to do. I think I was honestly there every week, <laughs> post like re doing religious studies and just smashing all the freebies in. <laughs> and they were like, you don't even believe God. I was like, how dare you? I absolutely love Jesus. Thank you for the sugar donut. <laughs> that's this what is, I did. This is... Arguably the most religious point of the year, and you're sort of talking. What? So, what? Okay. Don't worry just, about it. Just want to remain inclusive to all. Your media training has got you through the interrogation about your Christmas from British royalty to telly royalty. Mm -hmm. What's it like with Rich and Judy? Do you all sit down on the sofa and there's lots of sort of, you know, charades? I and imagine charades. charades would be no. a huge Well, you know, role. I told you, I didn't, when, when I first met Chloe on the last show, we said we had, we met on Twitter, my wife, Chloe, my wife. Um, and How's that sounding? It's good, actually. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It'll probably be divorced by the next show, but it's fine. Probably the last year. Yeah. And uh, no, so I, when I first stayed at her house, I remember waking up in the in the, in the night. And I didn't know who her uh, folks were. I didn't put two and two together. I didn't really pay attention to that. And I woke up in the night and I saw a framed picture of Richard uh, on the wall. And I thought, fucking hell, Chloe's into some fruity looking blokes. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure I can. I'm, I don't know anything like that. So this is probably just going to be like you know short short blown thing because I'm not. <laughs> like, and then it was only when I dawned in the morning when I kept, and I was like. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's your dad, is it? Right. That, well, first of all, I was relieved. <laughs> Second, I was like, oh, God, that's, uh, that's Rich and Judy's house I'm in. And uh, this is interesting. And actually, my first experience was of, of going around to the house was on Boxing Day. at, and, and it was like a baptism by fire. And they basically said, like, would you like to come around for some food? And I said to Chloe, yes, yes. Didn't really pay attention to what I was doing. Got invited around on the Boxing Day for the entire family. All brothers, all brothers. All partners. This was day everything. two. It was, yeah, not it was, day two. This was like. Was that 2015 then? Yeah. That was then when I went and spent six weeks with her after, was it? Yes, yes, you did. Yes. I oh, was that doing. The yeah, jump. the jump. The jump. She absolutely loves tins. Good. They, yeah, they used to have. They used to we all said some very nice words about you. You did. You did. And there's one quote. She, <laughs> I don't know if I can say it. But I'm going to say it. When she stuck her tongue out once. <laughs> one more. She stuck her tongue out once, and you said, "No wonder Hass likes you." <laughs> her tongue's like a cooking carpet, but it's not. It's not inappropriate. But we don't kiss because we were we weren't married at the time. We we're a family show. Um, but anyway, needless to say, it was uh, pretty intense. And I remember. Um, Did you handle it well? Because you, you like to back yourself in the mm, got a little bit of something to, to offer to I everyone. I think there would have been a bit of stumbling because you know what Hasky's like. Well, he doesn't get his words he's out not normally. Done, yeah, he's not, and he's not doing his research. So he's just going and <laughs> saying. <laughs> he, he, he's just that going. Very in, true. Start, bam, bam, straight in there. All right, I'm in. I'm gonna love this. And then yeah, there would have been awkward moments in there. But he always pulls. It I through. got. I got told. I got. Um, Richard told me to f off. On date two. No, well, it wasn't date two. It was, say, date five, date right, six. But on Boxing Day, you were talking. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so I'd heard that he was, and I've said this in the interviews just before, so I heard that um, when he was in the kitchen, because he was cooking crisps, because he's a, a wizard in the kitchen uh, and everything else, like, it's unbelievable that he gets quite intense, takes after a bit like Gordon Ramsay. And I'd heard a story. Chloe had been talking about something, and I'd probably switched off because she was talking. <laughs> and it was, um, and she said... You are so brave on this show. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Not, I can't wait for Chloe to be our special I guest. I know. And, she, and so basically... Um, she said, oh, Jamie Oliver once came round for some food and, and went into the kitchen and, and Richard chucked him out. So I didn't think any more about it. I went to the kitchen. I remember seeing, saying something to him, like gave him a little bit of like minor chat. And he just went, fuck off. And I literally was like, I, I honestly went like this, beep, beep, like reverse, <laughs> out of slow motion. Went and sat down and I was like, 
Work well. Um, I, honestly, I thought to myself, I like mine to go. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go home. And Chloe, and I obviously must have looked a bit pale. And Chloe went, what, What's wrong? And I went, Your dad's just told me to F off. <laughs> But this is a terrible start. Normally, the dads tell me to F, F off at least after a year. <laughs> but this has gone really bad. She went, don't worry, he does it to everyone. And then he came in. It was, it was, I was terrified, but, but it was his pleased fine. He's an, he's an absolute hero. And he is taking an interest in rugby. And he really? like, watches me, he like, watches at me, like, get, you know, like, we can't can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The old fine. YouTube clips, is it? Fine. You know, he, he, I, I put together a great highlight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. show him. On, on, I caught three balls in my ten clips. <laughs> it's available, whoa, at least five. It was available on jamesaskell.com. And um, <laughs> I, yeah, so he's, he's been great. So that, that, it was, from what was quite a dodgy start, was actually turned out Have to be Have you had them to Twickenham? No, I've tried to. But we're quite busy. More from that remarkable Christmas episode a little bit later on. But next, we are moving on to the long-suffering Mrs Haskell. Chloe joined us on episode 14, and once all of the uh, jokes had subsided, she gave us a fascinating insight into the life of a long-suffering rugby wife. It was it was a real learning curve. I think, um, you know, you hear, you hear the, the cliché saying, you know, athletes are really selfish and they have to be... Um, but when you are actually when you when you start to date one and you start to to get into that relationship, it is um, yeah, it's it's an eye opener and and you have to accept very very quickly that you will always come second, and that any social plans or any I don't know kind of romantic plans that you have will always come second. Um, and that rugby or whatever sport it might be will always come first. You know, this is a dream they've been pursuing since they were children. Um, and it's a very hard thing to break your way into. Um, and, you know, they are going to cover every second of it until, you know, they bleed it dry. And you and you really have to take that on. And I think if you, if for a second you think you're not that kind of person, and fair, fair play if you're not, you know, then the relationship won't last. Um, or if you want the relationship to last, you have to change quite quickly. So I very quickly learned that I was not anywhere near the level of rugby importance. But you would have understood, because of what you do, the dedication in terms of training, and, and you would have got that side of it and the hours that he has to put in. Yeah. The difficult thing is then Saturday's so important, so your social life goes out the window because yeah. you have to do that side of it don't you? yeah well that's another thing you get like the outer circle so my friends and family really struggled they were like why do we never see you they work nine to five monday to friday yeah your parents must have had challenges in that way i mean did you have any sort of prep given the world that you grew up in in terms of when you're committed to something that is irregular in hours you kind of have to live your life around it i think it prepped me in terms of i didn't realize how i didn't really watch rugby other than World Cup. But uh, no, I think I think my parents uh, being who they were prepared me for the fact that I, like, ev I didn't realise that happened quite quickly, that everywhere we went he got stopped, which was very annoying when we were mid-argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing Curry talks about is that, you know, like, we're having a row. Like, so, someone said a row at the airport. I mean, people seem to argue a lot at the airport. We, we just argue everywhere. <laughs> yeah, petrol we station. Argue petrol station, the car, the house, outside the house, in the garden. And, um, you know, I, I'll have a conversation with Chloe and while I'll be having a row. And, we, you know, I, I, she's really upset. And some bloke will come over and be like, Hass, mate, such a lag. Have a photo. And Chloe's like, Are you fucking serious? Like, you can see her. And obviously, she hates it because I'm. According to her words, acting like an asshole. Mm. And yet, people are coming over and telling me that and I'm. Shaking his hand. So, yeah. how do you deal with that? You have to bite the steering wheel if you're sitting in the car. So just, I mean, you just have to almost press pause I, on it. I talked to the other girls about it. It's really helpful. Really? I think in the beginning I was, like, a bit embarrassed that certain things would, would bother me because I, I feel like f a lot of people would find it, like, such a privilege and, and such a special... Like, his mum always said to me, like, it's so special. And, and to me, <laughs> there are times when it's just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, uh, it was hard. And then I actually... Op I think I got drunk on a social, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. And I opened up to a couple of the girls and they were like, oh, my god me too don't you hate it how men will come up to him and they don't even look at you like they don't even acknowledge you even if they introduce you yeah and if they do look at you it's just to see what you look like and and it can and it, and it sounds funny Check and it is initially uh, okay. but after four or five years it can be a little bit soul destroying really <laughs> yeah that is i mean it's fascinating to hear what you know what that side of it is like i mean is is it just his so, itinerary and you fit around it um, I think I got quite lucky. They're not all like this, from right. what I know. But I got quite lucky in that the only time... OK, so other than drinking, which is obviously a no-go when he's in season, and, again, they're not all like they. I talk about them like they. Right. Like they're uh, animals the boys in the aren't all like that, yeah. But I know that James uh, specifically has a no-drinking policy when he's playing. Um, other than that, the only time when it's um, actually when you know that he's going to play a game is the morning of. He'll wake up. He's very specific about what he has to eat. 
so it's always um, uh, oats uh, and a protein shake and scrambled eggs on toast uh, for breakfast. And then for lunch, if it's an evening game, it'll be a uh, fillet of salmon and brown rice and some greens. Um, and he's really big on hydration. And then what he'll do is, before the game, he'll do two things. He will uh, start by listening to music or DJing or whatever. And then he will, like, tidy the whole house. Really? Yeah, and I noticed that um, on one tournament, I can't remember what tournament it was. I think it was when Lanny was coaching. It was probably the first Six Nations. Yeah, yeah. And he would tidy the whole hotel room in Penny Hill, like top to bottom. And, and I would say, this is when we were allowed to stay, which we're not now. Um, and no, no distractions. No, yeah. pursuit of glory. <laughs> yeah. um, no boom. Right before the <laughs> yeah, he, would, he would tidy everything. And I said to him, like, oh, is this like a thing that you do? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, why? And he was like, I don't know. I think it's like clutter, like organizing my head. But it manifests itself with like actual Tidying organizing rubbish. Yeah. How extraordinary. Do you, do you, are you aware you're doing that? Um, yeah, I started to do it a little bit. Actually, um, I think uh, I saw a thing on, on, on social media or, or Netflix talking about David Hay. You know, he does um, you know something similar, like ties it how, you know, hotel rooms a mess, then ties it up. I, 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 I like doing that. I mean, you, you talk about the, the game day stuff. I had one, two stipulations for Chloe when we started going out. I said, listen, you know, in a week, really relaxed, doesn't matter. But I said, game day is game day. And I said, if you're, you know, unless it's something terrible, I, I don't want to know about any of your problems. No, That's no, the one he, day. he literally said to me, unless your parents have died, I don't want to hear yeah. about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, because it's like, you know, like, I don't like, you know, like, obviously, you know, a <laughs> bit, bit, more emo- bit more emotional <laughs> and everything else. You know, there could be anything. And I said, listen, if I've done anything wrong, if you think I've done something wrong, I don't want to hear about it. And so that, so that made, so that, she seems quite good. But I remember we, we've had some arguments, like early doors, where I said some, you know, pretty silly things. And I said to her, like, it's basically get on the, get on the train, because... It's, it, this is what no, we're no, doing. Let, let's do it verbatim. <laughs> you ready? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, go on then. Yeah. He, he said to me in the beginning, but in a way, this is what I mean. Like, it's quite good to have a crash course quickly because you have to decide you're in, you're out. But he said to me, let me, let me be very clear with you, Chloe. This is the James Haskell train and it's leaving the station and you're either on or you're <sighs> off. So figure it out. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I you, listen, it was in respect to, she was being a bit of a nightmare and, and she was being a bit mithery and windy and everything else. And I say, listen, I'm doing this. This is what we're doing. I'm going to try and make this rugby work. I want to. I want to do it. I don't want to hear about it. you're either on it or you're off it. <laughs> and I, you know, he said the same thing to us after episode one of House of Rugby. <laughs> yeah. I said, we're, we're training out this of station. Is James Haskell House of Rugby. You're in. You're out. We tried to stay off the train. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. to the station. Keep yeah. recoupling. Like, Please, Please keep recoupling. Hang on, guys. You sure you want to make this decision? This is the last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out the station. window. Let's go. Let's get boring. <laughs> I'm genuinely appalled by that, and I'm apologising on his behalf. No, but it's. It was like I say. It was a good crash course and i will say weirdly you've softened hugely now you've you're you've, you've got brow much beat me more into balance. submission submission dear <laughs> like you literally moaned me into like a curved shape so, oh, it's rough edges but you've like well, smoothed me so one or two of them he wins he plays well what's he like after a game oh you know again james is really good and i've obviously seen it um in in real life uh some of the boys just it, they go like catatonic James is really good. I mean, he's respectful of everybody. He'll stay quiet. But if they lose, he's like, well, we've got to play better. Yeah. So, and he, he's very much, I mean, he doesn't, he, you're not, um, what's the word, self-indulgent at all. When one... they win or lose, either yeah. way. And, and actually, that's a detriment to our relationship because there have been times I'm like, can you get excited about a holiday or the fact, the wedding? And he's like, no, I can't because he's made it. So he so lives in the moment. He doesn't get ex- he doesn't get ahead of himself, nor does he look back, nor does he sentimentalise. Right. So yeah, that's something I'm always trying to get him to do because I'm really sentimental Did and you, annoying. So he wasn't excited by his wedding. He was until on you literally the arrived day at the altar. Before, the day before. Yeah, I'm like I'm terrible, but I, I don't. I think Chloe's always like, "Oh, did you read that article?" Someone because I don't look at the media. I don't read things I'm on. I obviously post stuff on social media, but I don't really watch the clips back. I just make sure I haven't said anything inappropriate, uh, which is I have to burn 90% of content. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it's 9.9%. Uh, <laughs> take 65. Um, yeah. you know, Chloe, Chloe will follow that stuff and read that kind of thing. And I, you know, I get down if I don't think I've played very well. I get very... Uh, not just, oh, I play badly. It's very much like I want to improve my tackling. I want to do this. And Chloe understands that kind of stuff. So we have conversations you, like that. Do you talk about the game together? Or well, not? Last thing I wanted, listen, to so the last thing I wanted from a partner was somebody, because I've seen it with boys whose misses care so much. There's some coaches' wives that, that, that Tins knows that used to go completely mental, like shout at their husband. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't mention his name, but you know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and you know, would be go really mad at them. And the last thing I wanted to do was Chloe to come off there and go, I don't think your rucking was that good here. I didn't tackle. Why did you miss that pass? I don't want that. I want to know nothing about rugby. I never wanted the conversation to come up about rugby. Yeah. 
But if I spoke to her about something, what I wanted her to know was to be informed <clears> enough so she didn't do what my mum does, which goes, oh, you played so well. I'm like, mum, literally, I was used as a speed rump. Like, would you mean I played well? She's like, I love you. You're like, that's not what I want to hear, <laughs> yeah, mum. Yeah. I know that. But with Chloe, I want it to be, so I'll talk to her and go, listen, I was trying to work on this bit. And then I asked, what did you think? She goes, I thought that was good. I thought, you know, and she'll, she'll I want honesty. I don't want someone to tell me Only that I'm amazing. Only when you ask, though. Yeah, yeah you don't be like, eh. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she goes, yeah, and I'm like, oh, That's what was the worse. story? Yeah, 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 yeah. When he is at his lowest, and do you keep out of the way and let, let the bear sulk? Or I'll be, I'd love to emotionally what that is like for you to go on the roller coaster of the Haskell train. I'll be totally honest with you. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a. What's the word? Pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's four words. Sorry. Wait. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Right. Just um, checking. Yeah. I, I like. I'm. A, I'm a little bit of like a carer and a moddy coddler. So I, I quite like having the task of making him feel a bit better and picking him up. Yeah. Um. And I also uh, like I that, that depth as yeah. well. No, like it's interesting. But um. No. Yeah. Fuck no, off. No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but I would say it's like when I, I last thing I want when I'm. It, like on a game day or whatever, it's just like just do whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I don't need you to go. Oh, you. <coughs> oh no, I mean, I mean, if he comes back and he's like, uh, okay. like After, beating himself afterwards. up, afterwards. I don't get, nah. I don't even talk to him on game day usually. Nah. After the one time I broke his laptop in it. Yeah, that was a nightmare. <laughs> so I always, I like, I like to watch um, a bit of movie, listen to some music, and I, honestly, I left the room because when Chloe used to stay uh, at the hotel to go for a meeting, I came out and she was in tears. And I love my laptop. Like at the point, I love the laptop more than I love Chloe. Like, I, like I. Like, like wow, you're saying that publicly? Yeah. No, at the time, yeah. not now. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Like, I just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all like, I video edit. I do it well. Done for, well done for making it up the ladder. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait. If you were level that, oh, she's level with the dog now. So. Yeah. Right. One, one more step, and you'll be the biggest love of my life. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and um, <laughs> basically, uh, I left the room. I came back in. She's crying. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so. And I was like, what? 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 She's like, I've broken your laptop. And I, 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 I didn't go... This is before I, didn't, I grabbed her and go, how the fuck have you done that? You, I just went, it's okay, like, what, what do you mean you broke my laptop? And it had basically just fallen off the bed and the screen had just cracked. And, and she was more terrified, she knew it. And I was like, look, she's terrified about it. I don't want to stress about it. I was really calm about it. Yeah. You, you, you called all your friends. You ordered a new one and charged it to yeah. a credit card. <laughs> yeah, it's simple, yeah. right? She called, she called all her, her he friends. It was literally 10 minutes, though, from, from leaving the hotel to play an England game. Oh, yeah. a lot of words of wisdom there from Mrs Haskell. And she wasn't the only wife with some good, honest advice on House of Rugby. Here is Tins on the moment that he lost his head in a game and what Zara said to him when he got home. I ever tell you the story when I, I lost my... The only time I've literally lost my shit after a rugby game. When no. I played for Mitch and Hampton. Oh, I no. told you this. Never during my professional career. I started playing Gloucester League Division 3. And I know Hell of probably, a club, Mitch. I know he's probably <laughs> going to be listening to this story and he's probably going to text me, tweet me again, this guy. And I was playing, we were playing, we were like third from bottom and we were playing top. And from the kickoff, I dived on this ball, this opposition number, dived on the back of my head, kneed me in the back of the head. Got up and I was like, what, what, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and he was like, oh, I thought you played for England. And I was like, really? Going down. So they're carrying on playing, next thing, swinging arm. So I'm like, right, he's fucking having it. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> don't normally do that, but I'm just going to ignore everyone else. Whenever he gets up, and he literally, every time he got the ball, he passed it to his centre, so I'd melt his centre. And I literally ran around the field, and he was all the time going, I thought you played for England, you're shit, you're shit. And, like, and literally, for the first time in my career, my head had completely gone. I, I love was, that. And I was just running around this field after this guy. <laughs> and anyway, we got, and they hammered us, they were way better than us. And I didn't get to clobber this guy. So literally, whistle went, walked straight in the changing rooms, got my bag, didn't even get changed, didn't even take my boots off, got in the car, drove home. <laughs> You're kidding. So, so is that a pram? So I, got, I went in and obviously I walked into the kitchen <laughs> with my boots on them and I was like, what are you doing? And I went, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm in a half. <laughs> I've done the full thing. I'm in a half. She goes, no, seriously, what are you doing? I said, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going for a shower. So I've gone upstairs, had a shower, come back down. Don't take like, your boots off. <laughs> yeah. After walking, muddy the, muddy the arm, just get a bit out. the dog. Um, and she's gone, right, seriously, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, I told her the story. She's like, right, go back to the rugby club, have a beer with the guy mm. and grow up. And I was like... You hate it when you make sense. <laughs> yeah. So I put, I put the, uh, I've, so I've gone back and uh, at, they'd gone. So I had to be with a few of the lads. Anyway, I was on Talksport at the time and I relayed this conversation to Colin Murray the next day. And then, Bing, phone, tweet. 
I knew I had you. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Straight back to that one. Why do we fight him again? <laughs> well, he certainly had him, all right, and I'm afraid it didn't end there. You know that bloke um, who did you at that, that amateur game you were talking yeah. about? He tweeted, I said, I see him. He said, yeah, it was me. So in true House of Rugby style, you won't be surprised to learn that we hatched a plan. Producer Sai is saying you've, well, you always do, but you've spoken so well you can have a prize. Oh, thank you. Bring in the prize. Here we go. Oh, uh, gentlemen. Uh, a pint of Guinness. Is this is just Joe? in time, Joe. Joe, Mike. Oh, Mike, oh, Joe. Joe. Yeah. Hello. James, Hello. James, Joe. Joe's off. Hello. Thank Joe's you very much. Joe's mic'd up. Is he joining the show? Yeah, he's going to join the show. Join the show. How are you? Nice to meet you, mate. You all right? I'm all right. How are you? Thank you very much indeed. Hello. You're having one as well. How's it going? James, right? have you met Joe before? Yeah, no, I haven't yeah, met Joe. Joe. How are you? Mike, have you met Joe before? I haven't met Joe before. Joe's going to have a seat and join us for a minute. Because we had quite a lot of. Welcome along. He's won a competition to be here today. We Brilliant. had. Um, we're right. going to pick up though because we're talking about having pints right. with teammates and pints with opponents and things like that. And we had a lot of feedback tins off the back of the show last week, where you were talking about the bloke who gave you a proper going over when you were playing for Minch. Yeah. And a lot of people Is would like you? to know. I didn't even recognise you. Didn't, did you? <laughs> is that the fucking guy? That, you, <laughs> wait, let's do him now. Just as glad as I got him. Is that the one from? I was going to say yeah. with the dog. The what would you, you say to him now? I, 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 I say, you, where I did say, the penny drop? I said he, he's put on a bit of timber. <laughs> no, he wears a scrum hat. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, you should have come in in the scrum hat. That's got ripped off me a long time ago. Did it? So. Joe, you're very about, welcome on the show. We're about, about rebuilding <laughs> bridges. So just to put some context on this, because he's moved clubs now. Oh, has he? Yeah, so, so where are you playing for now? Uh, Nels and Battle now. Nels and Battle. Are you going to sing this one? Oh, no, you're playing at the weekend. Yeah, I know. You can sip it. Yeah, yeah. So just to recap, if you didn't listen last week, you told a very good story and paraphrase it. <laughs> I'm playing for Minch. Basically, playing for Minch. Uh, normally, people always go, are there any nausers out there who just try and do you over? Smash of, about. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, no, apart from this one guy who elbow, elbow dropped me straight <laughs> off the bat, then just kept reminding me that. I thought I played for England, you're pretty shit. I thought you won a World Cup. I like the fact you've put your head in your hands. Um, oh, God. It's average chat. Yeah. Yeah. And for the first time in my rugby life, I completely lost my shit. And yeah. uh, I started chasing him around the field, but didn't actually ever get to, <sighs> to get into sink him. my teeth into him. <laughs> then you went home, and Zara said, <laughs> the, why are you the, behaving yeah, like such a baby? Yeah, basically. And, go back and have a drink. And then I went to go back and have a drink. They'd already shot off. Um, and then I retold the story on, on TalkSport the next day. And then he tweeted me going, I knew I had you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in your pocket so he's as well. Double, he's double mugged me. <laughs> he's double mugged you. In yeah. the house of rugby, we like to have the post-match pint. It comes late, but I think you two should have a little cheers. You've got a bit of well experience, played, actually. Thank well you. played, yeah. well played well done, Where are you now playing, Joe? Nails in battle now. It right. was for Ashley Down All Boys at the time. That was the game. Yes, it right. Was. That was the game. And do you want to explain yourself? Apologise. So have you gone up the league? Not. I have, have no got... apologies. Have you gone up the league? I have a few. Yeah. yeah, I have a few. Can, yeah. Can I just point something out? I, it, honestly, apart from when you that and we realised so it was, I was like, jo- "Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and why have we got a competition winner? What what the hell's going on? Why is this is my show? Why do I know what's happening? The best thing was that you turned up before this. He got a seat, and I was like. Where's Murray? Like, he can't just make himself at home. Like, what's going on? But fair play, mate. You can stay. Uh, Thanks very much. Yeah. On a scale of really one to rattled, was his head? Did it just slip straight off? Oh, it's so far up his ass. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh my god! It was. I tell you what, I it thought this would be bad. apologies and hugs. I think no, this no. Could, could yet. Uh, no, it's fine. Kick no, there's no need for apologies. It was, no. uh, it was a good fair game. It the was. rest saw nothing wrong with what was happening. <laughs> did, you, did you target him from the start? Obviously, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Boy, did you see a weakness with him? Psychologically, he wasn't ready for what you had to bring. Is that what you're saying? Are you, I you wouldn't get that far. I wouldn't no. get that far. Here, we get that blue. He thinks yeah. he's all that. Yeah, he thinks yeah. he's royal family. Yeah, li- Fuck him. Literally, it almost led to me losing my shit with my own teammates. So, because right. these guys, you were top of the table at the we time. We were at the time, you? I think, yeah, we were pushing. And pushing we were like up, yeah. third bottom. And they were just doing like a scrum move and they'd just do hands and they'd score on the edge. <laughs> I was literally going, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was actually yeah. almost getting turned around to my own guys going, What the fuck? What oh, the fuck are imagine, you guys doing? Can you imagine going, Hamza's t- just scored on the edge. Do we not even t- Where's the fullback? Oh, wait, I imagine him just popping out of the scrum. Going, Here, Tindall, you think you're all that, mate? You're shit. We scored again, you dickhead. That's a really good accent. Thanks, mate. I tried. You, you, you got, you're not, you've gone back to playing seven. You're in the back row again now. I'm in the back row now, yeah. 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 So there you go, Jack Null. There you yeah. are, absolutely. I like the beard, though. You've done well. Trim, have you trimmed that up for tonight? Yeah, especially. Yeah, so really how did this come actually. about, out of interest? Producer Sai... One of, one of your mates left a message on the yeah. on the YouTube thing. Yeah, yeah, on the show. So. Yeah, and then they rang and said and said about uh, rang Nelson Batwell's club secretary 
and got in contact. I thought no, it was they went through all the official channels. At least. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it was good. Um, so what league are Nils in? Black? Somerset Prem. Somerset right. Prem sitting second in the league at there at the minute. So. You sort of look a bit related, don't you think, as well? We do, actually. Kind of literal <laughs> brothers. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It's just the hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> actually, I think you've got, more, you've got more up there than just I have. You feel like grow out. Just a bite. But I can't say anything. He's, my, you, he's like my idol now. But are you like, are you one of these people? Because there's there's lots of people in rugby who once they cross the whitewash become like really like chatty in your face nightmares. But then off the field they're fine. Like I remember like you know I like, did sense that that was one of his key uh, attributes. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying anything top, about his rugby. If you're playing it, top trumps, yeah. it was chat yeah, at the top. Yeah. That's what yeah. I've got. It was. Yeah. What do you what do you do day to day? What's your pipe fit a welder by trade? Oh, are you? That's all. Do you want to give a little plug for who you're? Uh... No, not really. No, no <laughs> they don't pay me enough. They don't pay you enough for that. They don't pay you enough. Yeah. So pipe fit a welder. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it sort of all comes together quite nicely, really. No, it was uh, it was a good experience to play. It was it was. But did he show was... any magic of the old of the old? Um... Actually, Quick tackle and jackal was really sharp. The tackle and jackal speed was. Still there, still at it, but and afterwards, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Then he was, it's not every day you see like a England player walking across the car park when you're ready to literally. Rock up to a is he turning up in England like, stash? Does he carry oh, the yeah. head 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 to, bag, yeah. head to toe, yeah, full, full kit wanker? Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> oh. now you just lied, <laughs> did he? No, he's got you on the run. I'm gonna fucking, yeah, you just said you can't home, actually. You can watch it just went off air. You just heard this going, listen, mate, you're gonna come on the fucking show, making a few jokes like that. Or listen, I didn't fucking say anything. Kicks up. <laughs> yeah. Tyndall, you're a mug, mate. I've always fucking said it. <laughs> oh, you're I'd very welcome. That. Well, that was a very good sport in the shape of Joe Murray, the only man to get inside Tin's head and to stay there permanently. Still to come, we're going to have more chippy opponents. We're going to go TikTok with Johnny May and we'll find out about the bat phone. Yours truly took a bit of a hammering on that one. But you are watching and listening to the House of Rugby, brought to you by Joe, together with our good friends at Guinness. And the third of our best of shows of the summer. Don't forget to watch and download Swanee's Cricket Show in the meantime with Graham Swan and Nick Bright, where this week the boys have been talking about the mentality of a bowler. When you see players who are on a, a purple and patch, a, a winning white. streak, all they'll play is with confidence. They'll never see the lake off the tee. They'll just see the hole. Mm. They'll never see the goalkeeper. They'll just hit, see the back of the net. And as soon as you start questioning yourself, as soon as you start imagining the lake or imagining the keeper save it, all of a sudden your goal's throw up or your three over par. It's exactly the same in cricket. That's that, why. That, that's what annoyed me. But that's why Graham played for England and I didn't, because all I see is lakes and goalkeepers when I was playing. That's that just panic. Really? Absolute panic. I trialled at 13 counties playing games for 13 counties before I got signed. So there was 13 people telling me I wasn't good enough mm. before getting a contract and then the 14th actually signed me in Warwickshire. So there's all that, that it's a psychological step to a barrier to sort of yeah. get over yeah. to sort of say, do you know what, I actually belong. And it didn't happen until I was like 26, 27. If you've got the answer right. to it, you're, you're the Absolute. most successful oh, man in the world. Super. I used to watch Shane Warne. He took wickets before he ran up. At the end of his oh, run, he'd toss up. Playing the name. And so when I bowled, I'd do the same. I'd stand at the end of my mark, and even if I had nothing, I knew I had nothing, I'd have a little smirk on my face, I'd look at the batsman, and just flick the ball up and go, and like almost wink at and go, I know something you don't know, mate. I was so just... it's a fight, it's a battle there. And then the second he, mm. he buys into that, because there's millions of people, his mum and dad are watching the TV camera, the second he questions himself, you're winning that battle. Well, that is Swanee's Cricket Show with Graham Swan and TMS commentator Charles Dagnall. That one is out and available for you to download right now. But welcome back to the House of Rugby with me, Alex Payne, picking through the best of the bits from Series 1. Before the break, we heard from an amateur nemesis of tins. Well, what about other chippy pros? But you know, Borth has talked up a lot when yes, he's on the field. Yes, I know. Oh, both was just ridiculous. Yeah, he used to get, he used to get, like, get into, I remember him, like, getting yeah. penalties to ref, ruffle me and, like, kick me around the head. I was like... Yeah. No, both is a proper <laughs> full on. Where does that come from? I don't know. Preston. Yeah, he, yeah. He Who else did Preston. it? Who else did it? Granny Grucock. Well, Danny Grucock. Yeah, but he was like, he'd he was, back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. He would fill you in. Yeah. And then and then off the field, you'd be like, you know you cleared me out by my balls and you almost killed me and uh, it really hurts and I think you might have damaged me. And you'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> really? Yeah. I told you a story about, well, he, he, when he stumped on my hand, he put a hole in my hand. <clears throat> so, so Danny, so I'd moved from Bath to Gloucester and I was at this ruck, and it was Borthos. Borthos had been an absolute <laughs> bell end. So I'd gone in and given a slight, in the days where you could give a slight uppercut, cleared him out, but with a with a follow through. Danny, and I've landed and my hand's there, and Danny's running off, play's gone that way, and he's running off, and it's taken him about three seconds, he's gone, I didn't like what he did then. So he's turned around, run back, stamped on my hand, put a hole through my hand. So I've had to go off, had stitches. I'm supposed to be going out with him and Tash for dinner that night, <laughs> and staying at his house. 
And I've come back, I've come back on the field, I've f- finished playing, and then the doctor says, you know, you need to go to surgery and get your hand properly washed out. And so I said to Dan, why the fuck do you do that? He goes, yeah, well, you uppercut a both didn't you? I was like, yeah, but it was being a nose. I was like, well, I don't care. I was like, but I'm supposed to be going out for dinner with you. Well, we'll rearrange. <laughs> I, like, oh, I love that. I was just like, okay, Danny, thanks. I'd say the biggest noise we, we ever had was a guy that doesn't play anymore, a guy called James Dunn, who used to play at Wasps back in the day, and he used to get DRIs, Danny related injuries, <laughs> where you, he had, we had to have a separate club out. insurance. Yeah, <laughs> you tell, BRIs. What was, what was, so what, we had DRIs and BRIs. <laughs> In the line out, you'd lift him at the front, right? He'd punch you in the head on the way up, <laughs> knee you on the face, elbow you on the head on the way down, <laughs> land on your foot, and then you'd li- literally be like, that, ah, on the floor, and you just have to shout out to the physio, DRI, DRI. There was a separate insurance policy uh, to pay for him. We used to, yeah, with Buckos, <laughs> Peter Buxton, exactly the same, uh, with no intent, completely not a nose, but he would at least cause three. <laughs> major severe injuries a year we're talking like literally we are playing touch with and this is where Ryan Lamb was literally off the scale he was so important to us as a 10 and we're playing touch and Bucko's like dived at him somehow landed on his ankle literally fully syndesmosis his ankle snapped the ligament between he's out for four months and literally we're like <laughs> Fuck Bucko! <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Fuck next Bucko, rocking, should next be on rocking your drill. Literally, bang, Clara. <laughs> oh, it's like Bucko, get off the field. And so the legend of Fuck Bucko was born. What a man and what an icon. But what about the legend that is the rope? Here are Mike and Haskell on that. But first of all, Hask on Warren Gatland's legend, and specifically on whether the Wales coach ever loses his rag. He blew a gasket at Wasps uh, a fair few times. Really? Yeah, because the thing, the thing that um, that makes Gatland, uh, I think, such a good coach and has had so much success because his record speaks for himself, is that he uh, understands how to put together teams in a, in a short period of time. He uh, ultimately um, wants to work you really hard but give you freedom as well. Yeah. So so he, he has that kind of nice balance, but he wants you to buy into everything and he expects players to buy in. So he wants people to front up, have that real physical edge. I remember my first training session in Poland. Um, I ended up having a fight with Trevor Leota. And I punched, Brave. I punched, <laughs> I punched <Yeah. laughs> Trevor was cheating on them all. I came out of it. I punched Trevor once, punched Trevor twice. We fell down. Trevor just did one straight punch, split my eye, split my cheek. He didn't <laughs> even look anywhere. But but Gats came up to me for the next five days and just massaged my shoulders. There's my boy. There's my, loved it, loved it, loved the fact that I'd done it. And um, and just he wants that from his players. Yeah. So I think if you if you tow the party line like that, then he's great. But if you go against it, I remember some bloke didn't want to sign. Uh, for for Was and his contract wasn't even up and he just came st- stood in front of everyone and said this guy doesn't want to sign doesn't want to be here so we're sending him home doesn't want to be part of it and just sent the bloke home and the same thing he came up to me I think it was a negotiating tactic but he, he came up and went I'm speaking to your agent apparently you want 40p a mile for mileage for club appearances you know if this is bullshit you don't have to fucking sign you can leave if you want to and I was like freeing up my agent 17 I was like I'll take the deal <laughs> I'll take the deal but that's what Gats does he's like he, he, he expects unequivocal buy-in and then you've got kind of short the emotion so yeah. Gats doesn't need to you know on the Lions tour he, he obviously <clears> controlled <throat> it but he's got Andy Farrell the emotional speaker Yeah, and, he, and he's great at putting a team together around him that helps facilitate his view so he watches everything from the top but he gets key people in to do the talking for him but he does speak but he's not like you know he's different than Eddie in that respect and Bobby Stridgen Bobby Stridgen. What a legend. What a legend a lot of the rugby world won't know about Bobby the Boucher rope. Bobby Boucher <laughs> rope, mate. the rope Oi. He was a Commonwealth wrestler. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, the, when he came, to, he came to Gloucester. Once. So he's he's the health, of, he's um, fitness so, guru. Yeah, so uh, he's now in Wales, fit, fitness S- guru. He still does some stuff at Toulon. Yeah, um, randomly bumped, uh, <laughs> randomly bumped into him on a plane back from France. Uh, he's such a great guy. He's such a good guy. Um, and uh, so he came down to Gloucester. And no one knew who he was at this time. This is right at the start. Yeah. He was when before, just as he started working for England, and. Um, we just had a sandpit put in. Which fucking idiot decided to put a sandpit in? Oh, let's get less injuries, so we'll wrestle on a sandpit instead. How about so, not wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing re- we're doing wrestling as backs, and then we're we're an odd number. So Ollie Barkley was left without uh, uh, like no one there to do it, and uh, Paddy went, "Oh, Stridge, can you just jump in and re- and you could see, but this guy's fifty two kilos dripping wet. He's like, yeah. Bart's going." 
what's the fucking point in this? And literally, it was the worst hour of Ollie Barkley's life, spending his basically his whole hour with his <laughs> Head face in the, sand. in the sand. Literally, like he was the Seven Stone weakling. It was, it was just ridiculous. It gets, it gets up and he's like, absolutely ball bagged. He's like, yeah. who the fuck is that guy? And you're like, oh, yeah, he went to the Commonwealth Games as a wrestler. But, but, he's like, Bob, Bobby, he, he, people would take him on, like Graham Roundtree would like, to, you know, like you'd see him have a bit of a wrestle, try to get Bobby to ground. Bobby would just like slide underneath, take him down. He'd like, he'd, you just see all the big lads would try to take him on at some point and he'd fold them all up. Well, they did but that he, on the lines, didn't they? Yeah. They all stood in a circle, all the forwards, and they all had one go. And I think it took eight of them before he was that fucked. Yeah. That someone got him on the that floor. He's permatanned. He's permatanned, yeah, yeah. salt and pepper lid. Yeah. And he's probably a... one of the most well endowed people you ever meet. Yeah. It's called the rope. It's called the rope. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I see. Yeah, but you yeah. saw the rope. But so much so that when he was younger, this isn't like a weird, dodgy story. When he was younger, I think when he strips off after wrestling, his coach went, Bobby. Has your dad seen that? <laughs> <laughs> because because it was that, that was mega. Honestly, I've seen. I've, I mean, my, my he's gone even higher in my estimation. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure whether you tell stories about what you used to do in the gym. Nah, you, I don't think you can tell that. I tell you a few things that because he's rope. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, he's rope. So I was magic. doing bench press once, and oh. it was a really heavy weight, and he just came and smacked it on my face. Yeah, to psych me up to lift this weight. <laughs> I was like, Bobby, I just don't need that. Oh, yeah, I don't need that in that, my life. If you're injured, <laughs> is rope's magic? So if he hits the injured area with rope, it fixes so it. Can, it's a sort of like a lasso. Uh, oh my god, mate. he does a whirlwind. Oh yeah, honestly, he does a windmill. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, but he so he comes over and he goes, "Ask me, how, how is your elbow?" I'm like, "That's a bit bad, Bob." He goes, oh, "Rope will sort it out." And he just hits <laughs> rope on it. Honestly, two days later, you're back fixed. It's a medical <laughs> miracle. And he loves seven second sleeps. <laughs> Yeah, he's literally, he's literally like, pa, pa, I had the best sleep. Seven seconds, I'm straight back into it. But, but he's Seven always like, he's, he's such a hero. Actor that he looks like Rob, what's he called? Schneider. Yeah, yeah, he looks yeah. Very yeah, like Rob yeah, Schneider. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. But he's, the it's best thing picture. about Robbie, uh, Bobby is that he, like, he's one of those unknown heroes in world rugby that I guarantee if you asked any professional player who's been on a Lions tour, any of these teams, they would always say they know him. No one's got a bad word to say yeah. about him. He's normally caffeined off his boot, like his <laughs> yeah. And he's always like, Wasp, he's walking around going, right, lads, Vit C, Zinc Lozenge, um, on planes, always trying to make sure yeah. the lads were taking things. Oh, Viper always turbos, smells... keep the wolf from the door, beat it shots. Mate, always honestly. smells good too. Always smells good. He can name a woman's perfume, the... any woman's perfume. Perfume. Well, we like to think that the House of Rugby brings you something new, something to learn every week, and I certainly will never look at Bobby Stridgen in the same way ever again. Another thing that I learned on the course of the show is all about the bat phone. As I said, fair to say I took a bit of a hammering, what the true meaning of the bat phone actually is. And all this came about off the back of Eddie Jones accusing Johnny Sexton of having a bat phone to the referee. How does Eddie know what a bat phone is? Yeah. That's the, out of all that article, <laughs> out of all that, forget what he said about sex and forget that. What the most important thing is, how Eddie's, does Eddie Jones Eddie's, know what Eddie's bat phone is? Batman would have been enormous when Eddie Jones was growing up. What was he called? Adam? No, 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 no. no, no, no. You're, you missed you're the point, mate. You're literally dead. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. talking about uh, does Eddie's wife know about his bat, bat phone? phone. Lads, I see. Lads potentially bat phone. Bat phone. Like, I know somebody, and Tins knows somebody, that used to have a bat phone in the drywall of his house. That used to just, you know, for obviously for extracurricular I it was activities. Like a SIM card. No, mate. Well, I mean, listen, you can, you know, you could do Educate that. Educate me in your. <laughs> no, I don't. Listen, Chloe, <clears throat> you know, I don't have a bat phone. But the weird thing is, is that I've got a few mobile phones lying around. She's like, when we first go out, she went, "There's a few red flags, James." And I was like, "What do you mean? We've got four laptops, three iPads, seventeen phones." I'm like, "Well, she started breaking them." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, what he's implying is the bat phone is. Uh, is, you know, a little sly it's little just, number that you have if you're doing extracurricular phone. bits. It's so he's doing, phone. he's doing Johnny Sexton twice. Twice. Yeah. Twice. But also, but more importantly, what does Eddie Jones know about bat phones? Where's he picked that from up? Right. That's the he's, whole... He's that's, the, that's what the headline should be. He, he, yeah, he's not, he's, he's not stupid. But I like how you thought he had a black bat phone, though. <laughs> like in the cave with Alfred. Because like, <laughs> then he does go on. To be fair to you, he does go Have on. Have you not seen his red... utility belt? <laughs> he does go exactly. on and say it's about the red phone. Yes. But you can, what is he implying, Johnny? He's got a picture of um, Nigel Owens' head, which he just flips up, presses a button inside. Nigel? <laughs> All right, bye. How are you? Well, the things that uh, rugby players get up to never fail to amaze, never fail to amuse in equal measure. Like Johnny May and the chicken, of course, his tins with more on the unique character of the Leicester and England winger. Quite a strange, strange kid. <laughs> Very strange kid. The ch uh, we've talked about chicken trapped in... The... Yeah. Um, what yeah. is that? I, I don't know. Possessed by a chicken? Yeah, basically. Um, <clears throat> I was saying, I told this story the other day, the fact that he we did a secret Santa. Yeah. And, <laughs> and 
he basically bought someone as a secret Santa of chicken, a live chicken, wrapped it up. He wrapped up the chicken? Uh, in its cage. Oh, I see. Yeah. But left it in his car for like a day and it oh. just shat everywhere all over his car. <laughs> uh, you know, he probably didn't feed it. Or... He's like the worst weight God. spotter ever, like Johnny, because he like, gets into this zone because he, he, he works hard. <laughs> like he, lifts, he, try, he tries to lift hard. But then when he's finished his set, he just goes and walks in a circle. And you might need a spot, and you're like, Johnny? And he's just walking in a circle whilst he's waiting for his next. <laughs> he's got a <laughs> thing, though, isn't he? He's on a spectrum. Yeah. Right. Legit on a spectrum. Like, if you ask him, he's on, he's on yeah. something on that path. Yeah. So I think it's quite a good story. I mean, everyone's making, like, out Henry Slade, obviously, incredible player. He's got diabetes, so he's a superhero. Johnny May literally doesn't know where he is. <laughs> so <laughs> he's borderline completely mad. So what he's achieved, forget the diabetes, you've got someone who doesn't know. He yeah. thinks he's probably at the zoo visiting some <laughs> sort of animals or something like that. Um, but no, we can't he's got what a great he does. thing. Where it's, where it's, people might be pissed off around. He goes, he goes, there's good news, there's bad news. It's just news. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like... <laughs> no, but that's what he comes up to me. <laughs> he comes up to me, he goes, Hass, what do you think of that? And I'll go, oh, it's not great. And he goes, just news, isn't it? We're like, just news, Johnny. And he just goes, tick tock, tick tock. Just does that with his head, but he makes a noise. Like, <laughs> walks off, doing it all the time. And I come over and go, oh, it's not great, is it? Shoes got, he went, yeah, just news, has. <laughs> that's it. Just, just, just is, he one of, is he brilliant to yes. have around camp? Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's, he's such a lovely guy. Like, I can't, yeah. I can't, and also incredible. Like, how fast is he? Yeah. But I told you, he's like Forrest Gump. Like he, I've seen him yeah. run into stuff like sides of marquees, yeah. down <laughs> banks. Into, into, he ran into the end of a golf buggy, mm. cut himself, cut his arm because he couldn't stop. So time, as always, for a bit of a perfect pull. But before we get there, James just had to have his say on some careful editing done solely to protect his reputation. I won't mention it again because last week got cut out. But if you notice my team that I put together of 70s and 80s celebrities is missing a fullback. <laughs> <laughs> and it's busy a ball back because some absolute vagine, right, in the editing department panicked and took it out. If you want to know who I said, then come up to me in public and I'll tell you who it is. Don't come to, like, don't surprise me. <laughs> I know, I know, like I know, I know, I know, as Ross was I'll saying, I'll literally karate. punch you in the throat. Um, but if you want to know, come and ask me because I will happily tell you who my fullback was. Mm. But they panicked, didn't they? Took him off. Yeah, I Bollocks. think I think they wanted the show to continue yeah. into other. Why? Well, of course it would continue. Of course yeah. it would continue. It was. It wasn't that controversial, honestly. I didn't advocate anything he was doing. I just apparently I, wasn't uh, the name. It was what you then said after it. Yeah. What? Then no one gets past him. <laughs> 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 Very true. Anyway, let's crack on with this show. I'm, you know. I'm actually a little bit worried about Why? where we're going to end up tonight. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a fury about you that there we has haven't been, experienced. We've had sadness, we've had elation, we've got fury this <laughs> week. You know, it's, it, there has been a whole roller coaster of emotions. It certainly has. But it started when I did that rant about Sir Clive Woodward and, and the stuff, and I haven't calmed down. No. I'm worried that I'm just getting like one of those opinionated like ex rumpers. If one more person asks me if I'm fucking retired as well, they get throat punched. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says, How long have you been retired? I'm like, I'm not retired. Well, I think it's fair to say the editors have done more to save Hask's reputation than any other people that he knows over the course of the last 10 years. Let's finish, though, where we started, and that is, of course, with the Christmas show and the Guinness Perfect Pour, our weekly test in 119 and a half seconds, because that is how long it takes to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Oh, oh my I'm God. Not, I'm not entirely sure you're in yeah. a state of mind to do this, but it is your weekly test in 119 and a half seconds, because that's how long it takes to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. There's no real right or wrong answers this week. We've given up on testing you, so it's just sort of... your. Christmas hinterlands and thoughts. Hinterlands? Yeah. Sounds like... It's a big word. Yeah. Sounds like, is it a German word? <laughs> no, it's an English word. Oh, right, hinterlands. Sounds like something like, you're like, oh, the event is a hinterland. <laughs> <laughs> no? Too much? <clears throat> um, stockings, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Midnight Mass, yes or no? Yes. Favourite carol? Um... Little, oh, little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> How's that go? <laughs> uh, you know, oh, little town of Bethlehem. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, that's like that. I can't. The professor's <laughs> lost his shit. <laughs> right, carry on. Come on, Rudolph. <laughs> Steer this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this, ship's, this, this ship's like the Titanic. This ship's completely <laughs> buggered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I guarantee that our captain's not going down with this. He's bailing. I'm getting a life career. His, his career's already taken a. He needs to get out of here. He'll be a luxury life craft that he brought himself. Yeah.
Uh, Come on then, what's next? Presents in the morning or after Christmas dinner or on Boxing Day or on Christmas Eve uh, or whatever both, it is that you do. Both. Pre- uh, Just loads yeah. of presents. Andy, loads. Andy Christmas Day would normally be... On Christmas right Day off. and then overflow to Boxing Day if, if it's a good Christmas. Yeah, well, can you cook a Christmas lunch? Yeah, I did. I cooked the turkey on the barbecue and absolutely smoked it this year. Literally. Literally. And, and physically. Because yeah. that's what the barbecue can do. Sometimes I could, you I could, your own mm. I could cook one. Just haven't had to. Yeah. Congratulations, you get a point each. Uh, what Christmas meat do you go for? Turkey. Okay. What do you have? Goose or something? I bet you what? have. Let me put it out there. I yeah, bet you the have. Seven bird. The, yeah, the seven bird feast. Yeah. Right. I'll have a swan, swan. <laughs> stuff with the chicken, stuff with the wren, stuff with the crow. <laughs> that's what you would have. Stuff with the crow. Crow. Yeah, crow's a delicacy. If sold him <coughs> in the river. A like. raven. It's not the birds I would have first gone to if I was <laughs> oh, oh, thinking seven. Okay. <laughs> an owl, an owl, pheasant, an Finch. owl, You've got to actually think of birds that you might Wait. eat. You do go occasionally fire a shot or two, so you should do it. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh, you've got two birds. Mince pies or Christmas pudding? This is a shambles. Mince pies. Mince pies. Mince pies. Favourite uh, favorite Christmas song outside of your uh, little town? Uh, oh, 12 Days of Christmas by the Smiths. Uh, uh, the, the, the Pogues. The, no, 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 no. There's another one called There's Something Where They Do the Funny Version. But just say the 12 Days of Christmas. I did. A, I, we did a Saints version of the 12 Days of Christmas. Our mini teams, I wrote, rewrote the words. And it, the bit was, instead of uh, a partridge in a pear tree, it was Hass getting drunk on TV. Very good. It was very good. Very and good. it was on the first day of Christmas, Boyd, he gave to me, so Hass re- getting drunk on TV. We just did a rerun. Yeah. Five gold. No, no, it was five balding. <laughs> <laughs> can't say it because that really will. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we can't go there yet. Um, Favourite Christmas movie we've done already, but the answer is... Elf. Yeah, I need to pick something different. Home Alone. <laughs> Die Hard. Uh, it's Stop trying to make yourself look cool. your yeah. character. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was not Abbey. It was not Downton Abbey, the movie. <laughs> True. Sprouts, yes or no? Yes. Yes, with pancetta and various other oh, bits. Yeah, nice. Don't look at it, yeah. Holly or Ivy? Depends what they look like. She's got this. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry. Shouldn't laugh at my own jokes, but it is good! <laughs> yeah. He's managed to land one punch yeah. in this entire show. Can you wrap a Christmas present? Yeah. <clears throat> well? No. It looks like um, the early learning centre's been to uh, the, yeah. the, the, the toy department and had a day out. You get your ribbons, don't you? And get them, get them. Yeah. Make do you put ribbons nice on? Do you put ribbons on? Do you curl the ribbons? I've tried. I do that. I didn't say thumb off. I won't say it had world. gone that well this year. Surely you've got a person that you just ring. You just leave the presents out there, don't ring over. <laughs> Jeeves comes. <laughs> I did have a person come round uh, earlier on this month to see, you know, I, I was like, really ha- carried away that, we actually have forgotten about the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That is a great Christmas That movie. is a great yeah. Christmas yeah. So I had Do you someone, want to get back? We can get back and re-record from I that had point. So if you want. I had someone uh, come round to look at what it would, take, how much it would cost, just to because we've got a little, little out barn that we're having some Christmas parties in. So it's like, can you? He tries to make that sound like a perfect normal conversation. <laughs> anyway, so I've got past the West okay. Wing. It's like a um, shed. Over the moat. Uh, it's, a gr- the party it's a Christmas barn. shed. Right, next to the party barn, next to the... That um, can hold 20, 30 people. So, right. um, <laughs> with ensuite bathrooms. <laughs> <one of them. laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Um, so we asked it what they would do, and then what it would cost to do the house. And then you realise that I can... Do it for a lot cheaper than that, so I'm not going to do it. But hmm. is it not cutting corners? Where was Mummy kissing Santa Claus? Well, what? Qu- quality Bond? of this year's present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you? Uh, depending on the quality the of present. I was, was going to say, no, no, was, gonna say was that a Cluedo question? As <laughs> no. in a room or, uh, or no. a body? Depend on, but... depend on the quality of Christmas presents. <laughs> I'd say uh, on the cheek because that's uh, appropriate because you wouldn't cheat it's on my a, father. It's a song. It's underneath yeah. the mistletoe. Oh, best Boxing Day lunch. Other than cold spread, uh, pepper salami, pork pies, uh, you know, essential items from MS, for example, cocktail sausages, French bread, salad. (laughs) (laughs) Mine's going to be in about an hour. Quiche Lorraine. Quiche Lorraine. (laughs) I. I'm going to be intrigued to know how Guinness find this show, having put alcohol into the mix. Nah, Do you fine. think it's gone well? I think it's gone unbelievable. I think it's, this is probably the best show, right? Um, that's that. No, we've got to carry on more fun. Ask some more questions. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite colour? Red? Um, what's your favourite motor car? Seriously, I actually want, I just want to go home now. OK. Yeah. OK. It's, it's noticeable that Hass just never wants the show to end, does it? No. 
Like, was he? Yeah. It? Him? Him. <laughs> yeah, but that. he refers to himself in all of those three. Yes. No, not third person. I haven't reached Lawrence Delalio status. Who's Does Lawrence Delalio in the pre season? Larry. Larry. Larry Delalio. <laughs> Probably a better lad. I don't know whether to offer an apology or just <laughs> commiserate. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just, can hope. Let's not say anything. Let's just hope the editors on this show are, are amazing. more sober than you. No, or on point. I um, I just hope everyone's in the same place that you are when they listen to this today. They yeah. obviously have yeah. had a good Christmas yeah. Day. I'm sure there will be a good Christmas I've Day. Done. Done. I've now got this and sort of 40 minute read that I have to do at the end of every show, which is getting increasingly difficult. Just a reminder to subscribe via YouTube or wherever it is you get your podcasts. <laughs> podcast. 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 That well known um, medium podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you can also download some of Joe's other programmes. <laughs> really? Excellent. You may have that is unprofessional and well done. Oh, boys don't cry. <laughs> Thank you to James. Boys do sometimes cry. For example, the producer of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and most of our listeners. And Guinness. And Joe. And if you if you're a young boy who loses a teddy. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby Bear disappeared on a plane. Got probably whizzed into I'm just being screamed at to rap. Hask, thank you very much. Tin's always a pleasure. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, and hopefully we'll be back to see you sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.